Hello Steelers and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how I built a battalion for O Group. O Group is a set of rules, it's written by David Brown and it was produced by Ricefitz Press in 2020 and it concentrates on battalion level gaming. Many World War II war gamers will be used to playing skirmish level games such as Chain of Command or Bolt Action which has a figure scale of one figure equals one man in real life. Even many of the higher level games retain the one to one scale of figures on the tabletop. However, O Group is different in that it abstracts a number of figures on the tabletop depending on the unit they represent. This is something that's probably more common in Napoleonic or Ancient Gaming for example, where a unit of 24 figures may represent a battalion of about 800 men in real life. So World War II gamers may not have encountered this before, therefore in this video I'm going to talk about how we represent the battalion on the tabletop and hopefully give you some tips when making your first O Group force. In my example, I'm using the American Battalion from the rulebook, you can find this on page 93. First we'll look at the basic battalion and what is required to put it together, and then we'll have a look at adding supports. I'm going to be using 15mm figures in this video, but any scales work as the rules mention, however the smaller the scale the more you can make your sections at a 1 to 1 scale if you really wish. I built my battalion using Plastic Soldier Company's figures and Peter Pig figures, the Plastic Soldier Company infantry box is a very good value for Oak Group, as you get enough for a basic battalion and will only need to add a few extra heavy weapons and vehicles for your supports. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Plastic Soldier Company. The basic battalion in Oak Group consists of three companies, but there's scope in the rules for making a large battalion. However, in this video we're going to stick with the standard three company formation, as this was typical of the last few years of the war for most countries. Each company consists of three platoons, and each of the three platoons then consists of three sections. Given the level of command that O Group concentrates on, platoons are going to be your smallest battlefield unit, and the sections within the platoons have to remain close together during a game. Heavy weapons can be deployed as a separate section, but an infantry platoon will generally fight together. On the other hand, armoured fighting vehicles can operate as platoons or as single sections. This allows your armoured units to be flexible, but comes with the cost of spending more orders to activate them. So starting with a smallish unit, we can build our battalion from ground up from the section. O Group doesn't specify a basing size, as long as both sides are based similarly and that both players can tell the separate sections used during the game, then all is good. For basing sections, I use Flames of War small size bases. These ones are MDF that I bought from War Bases. They measure one and a quarter inches by one inch. Each section is supposed to represent between 8 and 12 men. If you were to use 6mm scales you could do this at a 1 to 1 scale with the figures if you wish, and this would look quite nice. However, for the larger scales we're going to need to abstract this a little. So I'll use a base of 3 figures to represent the section, meaning that each figure is equal to 3 or 4 men in real life. I think 3 is a good compromise that ensures the base doesn't look too crowded as it might do with 4 figures on there, or too empty with 2 or less. For 12mm or 10mm figures I would probably use 4 or even 5 figures on a base, this will reduce the ratio down a little, but again this is entirely up to you and what you find aesthetically pleasing. Because of the abstraction in O Group, the weapons that figures are carrying doesn't matter. It has no impact on the game and you can put whatever you like there to make the unit interesting. So you can include squad weapons such as LMGs and light mortars. However, support weapons such as MMGs, larger mortars and platoon anti-tank weapons shouldn't be used as they have their own specific sections and things may get a little bit confusing for players during a game. The same goes with SMG armed troops, a couple dotted in here and there is fine, but if all men are armed with SMGs then you will have a specific SMG platoon rather than a rifle platoon. Also we don't need to represent the platoon leaders such as sergeants and lieutenants, as these would be mixed in with the sections and they wouldn't be seen at this level of gaming anyway. As previously mentioned, three of these section bases comprises our platoon, and then three platoons comprises the company, for a total of nine sections. So with three figures on a base, we are looking at 27 figures for your basic company. It then follows that for the full battalion of three companies, we require 81 figures to represent the riflemen. However, we will also need a company commander for each company, as these are important in the game for issuing orders amongst other things. These are represented on the tabletop and they can be done in any way you like, from a single figure to a group of figures. I decided to use two figures on a two pence piece, 
This makes them visually different from the rectangle three men section bases and then they're easier to spot on the tabletop. This then takes my total of figures required up to 87. Also, as we were talking about platoon commanders and the different platoons, I painted the underside of the bases of the different companies in three different colours. Red, white and blue for the Americans of course. This is so that you can tell the company the section or commander belongs to just by turning the base over during a game. Also needed is a foo or a forward observation officer. This only needs to be a single figure along with a transport. But again, I decided to make mine a team and use two figures along with a jeep for their transport. Now our total of figures is up to 89 and a jeep. You could stop here with your basic platoon. However, I went a little further and I looked at the combat patrols and the headquarters in more detail. The combat patrols are crucial in the game, as both deployment zones for your platoons and blinds to keep the enemy on their toes. At the most basic, these should be a 2 inch square or circle marker if you're using 15mm. I made some initially on Microsoft Word and then printed them and laminated them. They work fine, but I wanted something more immersive. With a 2 inch diameter MDF base from War Bases, I added 3 figures to each so it looked like a group of scouts pushing forward. This of course is entirely optional and a piece of card would work just fine. I just wanted something with a little bit more oomph. Now with 3 combat patrols for each company, this means that I used up another 27 figures, so bringing my total up to 116. If you go down a similar route, I suggest making these last as they're not a requirement, they're just nice to have. This is the same with the battalion headquarters and the supporting artillery. These are not necessary to play the game, but they do add a little something to the tabletop. A small vignette for the battalion headquarters is a good place to hold your HQ dice, and a few figures scattered across a base with some scenery really brings it to life. I made this with a medium sized Flames of War base and some spare figures that I had lying around. For the artillery missions and the battalion mortars, I just bought some extra heavy weapons. Removing an artillery base from the edge of the table when you fire a battery is a quick way of remembering how many you have left. As attackers usually only begin with three artillery missions, you'll only need three of these. That said, the Americans can take an extra one for a support option. Mortars are used throughout the game, and having a small mortar and a crew is a good place to place the order tokens next to when you use these mortars. Again, just to remind you that you've actually used them during that turn. Ok, so let's have a look at the support options you now have open to you in O Group. The supports will bolster the strength of your basic battalion, and you can choose what you want to add depending on how many points you have to spend in the scenario. Supports in the game are decided by the size of your game, either small, medium or large, and then rolling either one or two dice and also adding a base number to give you the points that you can spend to augment your base battalion. The supports come in two forms, battalion supports and divisional supports. Battalion supports are generally cheaper than divisional, but include smaller weapons, such as platoon heavy weapons, lighter anti-tank guns, reconnaissance vehicles and transports. Divisional supports are generally going to be larger caliber guns and armoured fighting vehicles. These are usually organised as platoons rather than single elements. I've mentioned them previously, but let's have a look at the battalion support sections. This includes MMGs, light mortars and platoon anti-tank weapons, such as the bazooka for the Americans. These also include HMGs, but these will always operate as individual sections. The heavy weapons sections are going to be the most common form of support you will field, as they are cheap and they would also be the most common on a battlefield as battalion supports anyway. In the case of the Americans, we pay for these platoons as a whole, and the cost in support points depends on how many sections you want. For example, the anti-tank platoon will cost either 2 or 3 points, if you want to take 2 or 3 sections of bazooka teams. These sections may then be added to your existing platoons or used independently. Only one support section may be attached to each platoon, so you couldn't have an MMG and a bazooka attached to the same platoon, they would have to be split over two platoons or operate on their own. These support weapons can also be built easily from a Plastic Soldier Company heavy weapons box set at a good price. Then we choose our divisional supports, and as mentioned, these are the next step up from battalion supports. For tank platoons, each tank is considered a section. So where on the support list it says two sections in the Sherman 75mm support option for example, you would have two tank models. On the support list, a single asterisk means you may only have one platoon of this type per battalion. 
two asterisk means that you may only have a maximum of three of these units per battalion. The number in a slash indicates how many points having one, two or three sections of these supports will cost the player. And then finally, a number in red indicates that the support may not even be available. You roll a dice, and on a 4+, plus, they are available to take. On less than 3, they're not available, but you don't lose the points that you would have used to spend on them. So, as an example, I am playing as an attacker using my American Battalion in a small points game. I roll my d6 and add 15 as indicated in the support section of the rules. I've rolled a 5, giving me 20 points to spend. The base battalion costs me 5 points. I have a first rate battalion that is also rated as combat effective for morale purposes, and these factors cost me 0 points, meaning I have 15 left to spend on supports. My basic battalion has no 81mm mortars, but I can get these for free if I select the heavy weapons company support. This will then also give me access to adding some MMGs or HMGs. I want to take some MMG sections to bolster the firepower of my sections. However, this is noted in red, so I roll for availability. I roll a 2, meaning I can only take up to 2 sections of MMGs. I do, and this costs me 4 points. So now I've got 11 left. Not sure what I'm facing, I decide to add some infantry anti-tank firepower in the form of two bazooka sections. This just costs me three points. I could have taken the 57mm anti-tank gun for more bang, but I'm attacking and would rather have something more mobile. With my final eight points, I turn to the divisional support options, and I can see that a medium tank platoon of two Sherman 76mm tanks is eight points, so I add these as armour support for the poor bloody infantry. This then brings my total points to 20. As an American, I have flexible reserves, meaning that I can attach my supports to my companies at any point in the game, and I do not need to think about it before the game starts. So these are the basics behind putting a battalion together for O Group, and adding support units to that battalion. All of this can be done easily and cheaply, especially in the smaller scales. There are numerous companies out there that offer 15mm, 12mm, 10mm and 6mm figures for example, and all of them can provide the support options you'll need. I do hope this video has been of some use. Let me know in the comments, and if you're not already subscribed, please do so, and also consider supporting me and the channel through Patreon, Ko-fi, or even channel membership. Thank you very much for watching.